Good morning, and welcome to our Tuesday morning Bible study. We are finishing Paul's letter to the Romans, the 16th chapter. That's it. We've made it all the way through, and I want to thank you for being a part of the gathering when we could gather in this room together, and I also want to thank you for tuning in this morning, and I know that as we conclude this epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Romans, I know that these words are going to continue to go with us and abide with us and continue to be a transformative uh, portion of our lives because uh, the scripture says that if we take that, meaning scripture, and implant it in our hearts, we will find that we do not sin against God. So that's why we study. That's why we're gathered here today. Uh, that's why we've been looking these past many weeks. The Apostle Paul, as he wrote his famous letter to the church, at Rome. So, not to belabor the point, let's have a prayer and we will get started in our study. Pause with me for prayer. Oh God, we are thankful that we can once again gather. We are thankful that we can hear once again your word as it is read, uh, as it is expounded upon, as it is uh, hopefully um, uh, explained. And we pray that through it all, your precious Holy Spirit would enlighten our hearts and our minds that we can truly hear and understand the Word of God, your Word, that is present and active and ready for us this day. In the name of Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Now, in this chapter, uh, there are a lot of uh, big words, uh, folks that are named uh, very unfamiliar names. Uh, we typically use names like uh, Sam and John and Jim and Brian and other names, but uh, being that this is a Greek and a uh, Middle Eastern, especially Greek, since Paul's uh, writing to the Romans, uh, there are some very unfamiliar names. So we may stumble through this a bit, but we're going to get through it, and we're going to hear uh, once again from the Apostle Paul. And here's what he says, beginning in the first verse. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church in Synthrae. Now, it's important to note that uh, this church here uh, was, in fact, pastored by Phoebe. And Phoebe happens to be female. And Paul says, I commend to you our sister, a servant, or in the Greek, a deaconess of the church at Synthrae. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and to give her any help she may need from you. For she has been a great help to many people, including me. And I think that this is a description of a lot of females that we see uh, in Scripture throughout the whole entire Bible. Women have played a very important role in the faith, both the Jewish faith and then the Christian faith. And women continue to play a very important role. The church would not be able to function without women. But here's what Paul is getting at. This is not just any woman. This is a woman that has been called to be in leadership in the church. This is case 
in point that God calls, equips, and uses women for ministry in the church. And not just behind-the-scenes type ministry. Not even just teaching children's Sunday school. Not even being a part of a group of quilters or a group of church women. But he calls them and equips them for pastoral leadership in the church. He always has and he always will. Paul understood that. And he called for the people to assist her because she is worthy, because she has worked with all that she has and all that she is to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And she has been a great help, including me. <clears throat> but that's not the only person that Paul wants to extend a greeting to. He says, greet Priscilla. And Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, they risked their lives for me. I think in the King James Version, it kind of says they put their necks on the line. And not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. So greet them. They risked their lives for the furtherance of the gospel, for sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. And I and all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. I think that's an important word for us here because in the midst of this uh, pandemic, in the midst of this national health crisis, we have been forced outside the walls of our churches, not by uh, any uh, stern mandate, but we have been forced out in concern for others because it is our Christian concern for our sisters and our brothers who may be vulnerable in their own health. I may not come down with COVID-19 or coronavirus, but I may be a carrier. And the last thing I want to do is pass this along to someone whose health is not as good as mine. So that's why we're staying away. That's why we are social distancing. We are trying to stop the spread of this virus. We are trying to, as the medical community says, and as we've heard uh, time and time again, we're trying to flatten the curve. But an interesting thing, I, I say all that to say that we don't have to physically meet in this building, the sanctuary over here, in this parlor. We don't have to meet here to be a church. You see, Paul was talking about a church that meets at a house. You know, that's where the first churches uh, were established in people's homes as they sat around and they ate with one another and they broke bread with one another and they shared their faith with one another. And then as they were encouraged, they went out and they called other people to be a part of that fellowship as well. And sometimes someone would start out in, in one home, but then they would go to their own home and start a church. So churches meeting in houses, churches meeting in places other than beautiful, adorned sanctuaries is biblical. Now, I, I, I really want to meet in our sanctuary. I really want us to be back here at the church, don't get me wrong, but uh, we can worship God wherever we're at. And maybe we can even draw some people into our homes that don't feel comfortable in a church, and we can introduce them to Christ in our home and then we can invite them to church. Then they can get to know us and they can know that church folks aren't that much different than they are at all. And then they can feel comfortable moving into a worshiping community. But greet also the fifth verse, the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend, Epiphanus, 
who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Ananicus and Junius, my relatives, who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Now, wouldn't you just love for someone to say that you were just outstanding among all of the disciples? I mean, that's a goal, to have someone say out of all the disciples, there's one that's outstanding. Not that we want to toot our own horn or say that we're better than anybody else, but isn't that the goal? To be outstanding, to be so overwhelmed and filled with the Spirit of Christ that we just stand out. That you can't help but say, there goes one of Jesus' disciples. They were outstanding among the apostles. And they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampelatus, whom I love in the Lord. Greet Urbinus our fellow worker in Christ, and my dear friend, Stachus. Greet Apellus, tested and approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the household of Arbistulus. Greet Herodian, my relative. Greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Toparnia and Tripotia. Those women who work hard in the Lord, see there's more women here, and they work hard. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Greet Asictrius, Philagan, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brothers with them. Greet Philegas, Julia, Narsus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in their way, in your way, contrary to the teaching you have learned. Watch out for those who cause divisions. Watch out to those who put obstacles in your way. That's no different today. There are going to be those that uh, major in causing division. There are going to be those that uh, put stumbling blocks, whether they realize they're doing that or not. Stay clear of them. In other words, stay clear of division. Stay clear of that which divides the body of Christ. Let us come together in unity. Let us come together in unity for the cause of making disciples of Jesus Christ. And you know, I see that happening right now. Before this COVID-19 took over the news, there was tremendous division in the church. And while there still may be division right now, it's not being majored on. We are rallying around how we can reach people for Christ in the midst of this crisis. So watch out for those who cause divisions, put obstacles in the way, contrary to the teaching you have learned. Because not only are those are there those that are going to try to divide and put obstacles, there are some out there that are teaching things that are contrary to the faith. Uh, so stay clear of those. Uh, and remember, remember what you've learned. And don't be led astray. Stick close. Stick close to what you have learned. And stay away from those calls the vision, and put obstacles. For such people, those that are causing divisions, 
those that put obstacles, and those that teach what is contrary to what is the foundation of the Christian faith, those are not serving the Lord Christ, but they're serving their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I am full of joy over you, but I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. Be wise about what is good and be innocent. Don't know, don't have any thought or knowing about what is evil. Be innocent to what is evil. Don't even go there. Stay away from what is evil. Because the God of peace in the 20th verse will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The one who is ultimately causing division. The one who is ultimately putting obstacles and stumbling blocks in front of those who are striving to be faithful. Keep away from them. Keep away from them. Keep serving Jesus. Don't serve your own appetites. Don't be drawn away by those who have smooth talk and who are flattering in what they have to say because they deceive the minds of naive people. God will soon crush Satan under your feet. Your feet. <clears throat> 21st verse. Timothy, my fellow worker, sends his greetings to you, as do Lucius, Jason, Sostipar, my relatives. I, Tertus, who wrote down this letter, greet you in the Lord. Now, it's important to note that Paul did not physically pen this letter. Uh, he dictated it to someone, and they wrote it down and made sure that it was sent uh, to the church in Rome. And he identifies who he is. I, Tertius, wrote down this letter, and I also greet you in the Lord. Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here enjoy, send you his greetings. Erastus, who is the city's director of public works, and our brother Quartus, send you their greetings. Now, to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed, made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, that's it. That is the end of Romans. Such a powerful book. Such wise words trying to keep us uh, doing what we have been called to do, uh, seeking to keep us in the place of holiness, the place of grace, the place of sound teaching that we have been brought up in. And Paul, as he encourages the Roman church, is encouraging us as well. Stay true to the faith. Continue to believe in God. Continue to trust in God. Because that God that you trust in, the God of Jesus Christ, is all-powerful, is all-loving 
is all graceful and grace filled. And my friends, he seeks to make you and me that way as well. He seeks to give us power. Power to live the type of life that we have been created to live. So I leave you with these words. To him who is able to establish you by the gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made, thrown, made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for walking with us through uh, the writings of the Apostle Paul um, as he dictates or did dictate to the Roman church uh, who God is, who God had created them to be, and how through the power of God and his Holy Spirit they can be just that. Help us to be so as well. Thank you for this study. Thank you for this time. Continue to guide us and strengthen us and help us in and through all things. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen.